over two million pounds into what we call the neighbourhood networks. And those are the, what we would say, are low level support, but very crucial is for people that are beginning to feel isolated, lonely, cut off from community, not able to get out. It's really for people who, you know, they might be beginning to suffer early signs of dementia and things like that. <coughs> you know, just where they're on the edge. <coughs> and in reality, they wouldn't get a big care package, but they need that bit of support to keep them where they are living now. And that really is what the Neighbourhood Networks is about. So that's another part of the prevention. And then we're linking up with our health colleagues in terms of what they're doing. Um, and it's called community prescription, but again, it's about support in the communities at a low level to help people remain engaged and healthy. So that's the kind of thing we're doing there. And then a number of things which are pretty fundamental to implement the vision. First is partnership working. I mean, I always say to people, we cannot do this on our own. We have to do it in partnership. And it's absolutely critical that that partnership includes health, third sector, and you know, users and carers themselves. That's the kind of partnership we're talking about. Um, another fundamental thing for us is about safeguarding it is one of the duties that we have in adult social care but we need to make sure it's personalised as well. There is no point having you know, a safeguarding service that keeps people safe, but they're utterly miserable and don't need a good quality life. You've got to find the balance. So we stress that, that it's got to be personalised so that people can enjoy a good quality life by making sure that they are safeguarded. Um, and then bringing us on to really um, where we are today is about co-production. And that is fundamental. It's something we talk about, but often don't deliver. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're really keen to do, do now, to make that fundamental change, whereby people feel that we're engaged from the start, they know what we're trying to achieve, they understand the way we're going about it, and they're engaging with us to help us get to the place in a way which they feel comfortable with as well. I mean, I, I can be absolutely honest about this. I have been through so many consultation exercises in my career where the answer's known before we go out to consult And I mean, I, I experience it in my own life. You know, I, I live in Warwickshire. The Warwickshire County Council consults me. And I, I'm sitting there thinking, well, you know what you're going to do anyway before you yeah. <laughs> so what's the point? I, you know, people don't feel any differently about it in Birmingham. So we've got to change that. And those kind of exercises which are about, you know, a, con a one-off consultation with somebody which is going to affect you for the rest of your life is not the way to go about it. Instead, we've got to engage people all the time. And that's what I think, you know, those exercises and direct payments that I've talked about are beginning to try to do, is to begin to change the whole nature of what we do so that these kind of exercises are the norm. This is how we work, and that's what we need to get to. And then finally, the, the other bit I would stress is about use of resources. You're all well aware of it, the financial position um, in the country, and particularly for local government. So I've got to make sure that every penny we get, we use wisely. And again, I think the best way to do that is talking to people themselves about what matters to them and what they think is important. Because I can assure you, in my career, I've, I've been you know, in a situation when I've said to users of services, you know, do you, you know, do you value this? Do you want it really? And we said, no, but it's all it's on offer. So we take it. So what, you know, but that is not the right way to go about it. The right way is to establish what people actually need, want and value and then make sure they get the back. And often when you do that, you find that people actually, you know, what they, what they want and what they need cost a lot less than what we're providing in different ways. So it's about use of resources as well. So um, I think that vision, those are the elements behind it. That's the programme we've embarked upon. Um, with it, you know, become a bit more technical. Behind it, we've got a business and improvement plan. So for every element of the vision and the principle, the elements I've described, there are projects and plans. Every one of those is a leader, it's got dates by which it will be delivered, it's got performance targets, and it's got the budget and uh, budgetary benefits and benefits for the customer, the user. So it's all laid out so that at any point in time we know how the vision has actually been delivered. Uh, you know, so that's the key thing, and that's what gives me confidence that we're moving in the right direction, that we're addressing the challenges that we identify um, that we identified. Um, earlier on, you know, and, uh, last year, and that the vision is describing the right outcomes to get to where we need to be for the future. Um, so, I will, call, I will draw uh, to a conclusion there. Uh, I just want to thank you again for inviting me.
and give them the opportunity to set out a vision. Remind you again that we see this as part of an ongoing process. Uh, and like Councillor Hamilton, I wish you well for the rest of the day. And I'll now pass over to Polly to talk to you about the Engine Rail strategy. So thank you very much. Do you want the whole thing or do you want to, the little things to pop up as you go along? Um, I didn't know the little things popped up. I didn't put the presentation There you together, go. So it's <laughs> I didn't know they popped up. There you go. So the Aging Well programme is split into three. Can the volume up a bit, please? Adib can do that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> can I just say, the slides aren't on the tables yet. Yeah. All right, now we haven't got them. We'll them straight yeah. after this meeting. They'll yeah. be available on the website. We're all yeah. ready to do that so everybody gets on. They were finished very late last night, not because of our disorganisation in my team, but some of the colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> If you talk, Pauline, then okay. they'll know. Is that any better? Talk up a bit. That's better, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's louder. Yeah. So the HMR programme is split into three different work streams. Prevention, early intervention, personalised ongoing support. So prevention is a universal wellbeing offer for older people to manage their own health and wellbeing within their own homes. This is looking at... Um, social isolation, forms to support people in their own community before they need services. Early intervention is for when people are unfortunately unwell and it's to prevent hospital admissions, to so keep people in the hospital for the shortest time possible. An older person in hospital, my background is hospital social work, an older person in hospital over 80 loses 10% of their muscle tone for every day they're in hospital is my understanding. So actually we need to keep people in hospital for the shortest period that they need to be there clinically. And then personal, personalised ongoing support. There will be people that need ongoing statutory services and both health and social care and that's what the personalised ongoing support work streams are about. Next one. Yeah, please, thank you. Our joint vision, Aging Well has brought together a joint vision. One of most people have heard about the CQC report this time last year. Um, and that one of the good things about the CQC report is it brought together a Birmingham wide joint vision for care. And the joint vision is that whoever is in contact with an older person and their carers will work in partnership with them to find out what they want and need to achieve and understand what motivates them. We're all, we're all experts in our own lives um, and that we, as a system we have to recognise that. We have to focus on a person's own strengths and help them realise their potential to be healthy and happy and to regain independence and remain independent for as long as possible. We need to, to build the person's knowledge, skills, resilience and confidence and learn to observe and guide and not just intervene. Support positive risk taking. I think it's clear as a system we're not good at supporting people in taking risks. And pr promote the use of joint health or social care, personalised budgets or direct payments. So a little bit more detail about the prevention um, work stream. What we want to achieve is that older people will feel safe to enjoy the wider community assets available. And neighbourhood networks, as Graham has, has already talked about, will be, it will be helping the communities to develop um, wider, wider services to support. We've got to provide the best advice and guidance on what people might need and where they need it. Help local groups to develop new services and activities and keep people connect, keeping people connected keeps them physically and mentally active. 
there was some research I think I heard on the radio before over Christmas that talked about loneliness being as serious as most medical 